Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeremy, a fantasy writer who loves discussing topics that intrigue and inspire me across fantasy, science fiction, and mythology. Today, I wanted to give my review of A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Recently, I've been getting back into reading fantasy novels, and I thought this would be a great place to dive back into the genre. From what I've read, and from what I've heard others say, the Earthsea novels are considered foundational to modern fantasy, because so many of the ideas and concepts that we see in modern fantasy get their inspiration from this book. It's very much a classic hero's journey, coming-of-age type of story geared for children. It hits all the old tropes like the wise old mentor and the call to adventure, but sometimes that's just what you want. Sometimes you're just in the mood for a classic adventure. It's also a super quick read, so if you're in the mood to read a fantasy novel but you don't have the time or the bandwidth to get into like a doorstopper novel like Lord of the Rings or the Malazan Book of the Fallen, this could be a good one to get into. It's only 200 pages or something like that. Alrighty, let's get into it. I'm going to keep it spoiler light, but I might touch on some spoilers here and there, so consider yourself warned. To start, I really enjoyed the setting. Earthsea is described as this archipelago of hundreds of islands. There's not any major continents, and there also doesn't seem to be any huge cities or anything. The humans in the book live really close to nature. The setting is very lush and cozy. It's a very peaceful atmosphere overall. The story starts us off on the island of Gaunt, which is a mountainous island in the Northeast Sea. A young, unremarkable farm boy named Dooney soon learns that he has an aptitude for magic, and his aunt, who happens to be a witch, ends up training him in simple spells like calling his farm animals back home from the pasture. At one point, a rival empire attacks, and Dooney uses his magic to confuse the enemy, which gives his fellow villagers the upper hand. After that battle, rumor spreads throughout Gaunt about this boy's powers, and a traveling wizard named Ogion comes to investigate. Ogion senses that this boy has great potential, and could possibly become the greatest wizard who ever lived, so he offers to continue the boy's training. There's this really cool scene at this point in the novel where the transition from boyhood to adulthood is symbolized by the main character losing his name and then assuming a new, true name. Dooney was the boy's name in childhood, but his true name in adulthood is Ged. There's this recurring theme in Earthsea that knowing something's true name gives you power over that thing. So wizards are very careful to divulge their true names, and they only let people they really trust know their name. So although we, the reader, know the character as Ged, he introduces himself to other people as the alias Sparrowhawk. Ged trains under his master Ogion for a while, but it's here where we start to see that Ged's pride and impatience can get the better of him. Ogion's philosophy around magic is that it should be used very sparingly, because it's almost impossible to grasp the full consequences of its use. As an example, Ogion doesn't even want to use magic to deflect water away from their house when it rains, so they end up getting soaked. Ged ends up getting bored of never using his powers, so instead he leaves Ogion to attend the wizard school on an island called Roke Island. He enrolls there and makes a few friends, but he ends up making a rival too, named Jasper. Or was it Malfoy? No, no, definitely Jasper. This rivalry between Ged and Jasper builds up to this point where the two boys have a duel to decide who is the better wizard. Ged ends up using forbidden magic and then accidentally summons a shadow creature, a being with no name, from another dimension. The remainder of the novel involves Ged traveling to these different islands, gaining different skills and knowledge that will help him to understand and defeat the shadow. Overall, I really liked Ged's character arc. When he first learns magic, he starts off as this big fish in a small pond because he's really the only wizard in his village. And you can see that this experience really goes to his head. He thinks himself better than his first master, Ogion, who represents this slow, cautious path to power that's ultimately in harmony with nature. And Ged doesn't seem to want any of that. He just wants power as fast as possible. And at the Wizard Academy, his pride reaches this breaking point that unleashes chaos and destruction for everyone around him. The main antagonist of the novel isn't some big, bad emperor or king. It's this th shadow creature created by Ged's arrogance. And there are real consequences for both Ged and the school because of Ged's disobedient act. Le Guin does a great job demonstrating Ged's fallibility and also his weakness. After the shadow creature attacks him, he spends a long time recovering, 
so much so that his fellow students actually surpass him. It shows that there are real consequences for overextending oneself, and if you gain too much skill or power without the wisdom to wield it correctly, you just end up hurting yourself in the long run. Le Guin was also very interested in Taoist philosophy, so much so that she actually published an English translation of the Tao Te Ching later in life. There's some interesting Taoist philosophy that makes it into the novel. This whole idea of using magic sparingly follows the Taoist principle of non-action, which means to do nothing that stands in the way of the natural course of events. It's not possible to create or destroy with magic, only to manipulate. So if one were to call for more rain to water their crops, for example, it would just lead to a drought elsewhere in the world. The book also emphasizes that we shouldn't see humans as the most important beings in the universe. Ged eventually learns that animals, plants, rocks, and other elements of nature possess an intelligence that he has to learn from if he is to grow in wisdom. We get hints of a magic system, although it's not really fully spelled out for us. And, you know, I like that. I like when I have to piece together how the world works using information through bits of dialogue and through setting and all of that. I think I mentioned earlier that a wizard must know a thing's true name in order to acquire power over it. And this is why the shadow creature is so dangerous in the first place, because it has no name, and it comes from a realm which nobody understands, and therefore it cannot be controlled. The common language that people speak is not the true language, so there are secret names for all of the animals, plants, and everything really. This system presents realistic constraints, so it's not easy for any one wizard to just be able to control everything in the world. An example in the book is that if a wizard wanted to control the entire ocean, they would need to know the names, the true names of every drop of water in the ocean. And I thought that was a cool analogy because there's this natural limit to a wizard's power because there's only so many true names for things that you can acquire in your own lifetime. All right, with all that said, let's move on to some of the things that I didn't enjoy so much about A Wizard of Earthsea. So as anyone who has read Le Guin before can attest, her writing style can be a bit terse to say the least. I would have appreciated better descriptions of the more important locations, like the Wizard Academy, for example, and I also felt like I didn't get a strong sense of the relationships between the characters, because so many of the sections were just kind of breezed through. Ged has, I can only really think of one notable friendship with a kid named Vetch at the Academy, and when I think of it, it just feels a little bit flat, like I can't really recall anything remarkable or memorable about the friendship. And the same thing about Ged's rivalry with Jasper. Aside from their duel, there aren't really memorable examples or highlights of there being this real animosity between them. If I contrast it with, say, a novel like Harry Potter, I can really think of the rivalry between Harry and Malfoy. It's, it's very palpable and very memorable. So I didn't quite get that experience with this novel. In the latter half of the novel, Ged ends up island hopping quite a bit. And I think I just lost track of all of the places because there weren't new interesting characters or landmarks associated with each place. And things happen at each place, but it just kind of happens in rapid fire that you're not really processing it or you're not really um, di digging deep into the things that are happening because it's just kind of happening really, really quickly. So if I had to sum up, the main drawback would be a lack of interesting dynamics between Ged and the supporting characters. But I get that Le Guin's style when writing the novel was very, very high level. The book seems to convey itself as this sweeping narrative about Ged's journey without really getting bogged down in the details. And it's kind of indicative of how the genre was back in the day in the 60s when the book was written. But our ex expectations as readers of modern fantasy has moved quite a bit from, from how this is written. The book has a really strong theme and arc but lackluster details overall, in my opinion. And even though it wasn't maybe the most exciting read, I would still definitely recommend it, picking it up, um, just because of how influential it was for current authors in modern fantasy. Nowadays, when you read it, it might feel a little bit generic, but I think that's only because it inspired so much of what came after it. Also, as I mentioned, it'll feel a bit dated because our expectations for fantasy novels have shifted so much. But its biggest strengths are really the underlying themes and the underlying philosophy. All right, that's it for me for today. If you like this and you want to see more fantasy related videos, please be sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that notification bell, all of that good stuff. Thanks again and see you next time.